my opening statement today is to say I wish that all the stupid crap coming out of LeBron James's mouth was going to come back to haunt him. And it should, but there's a problem. As I stated in the 2011 collusion breakdown, society has shifted for LeBron. Or, coincidentally, it's happened at the exact same time. A downward spiral of behavior and a downward spiral of ethics and the desire to hold people accountable or to expect better behavior. No, it is a society of accepting excuses and making excuses and saying, well, here's why that happened, rather than saying that just shouldn't happen. How do you come back from something like that? I mean, we're talking about an entire shift in the way people think. This is not as simple as LeBron James retiring and people suddenly going back. <laughs> it takes a lot for people to change. It takes even more for people to change their way of thinking. So to hope that people will suddenly become ethical, will suddenly embrace accountability, will suddenly go back to holding people to a standard, I, I don't think it's realistic. With LeBron James, it is legitimately hard to decide where to begin. On a daily basis, he provides a whole new buffet of absolute garbage to choose from. I listened to a clip, I listened to several clips that are provided by other channels who have listened, because I'm certainly not going to go listen. I'm not going to give support to Reddick and LeBron, but it's increasingly clear that the podcast is exactly what those of us who are awake and aware of what's happening thought it would be. <laughs> and it's just LeBron James bragging on himself, crapping on other people, and pretending that it's something else. Now, when he says that guys can't run the exact same play on the other side of the court, I actually find that a little bit hard to believe. Uh, I mean, for what I think should be obvious reasons, you know, the inability to flip-flop something uh, seems, I don't know, like, I'm not saying that I think NBA players are the smartest people on the planet, but that doesn't seem like it requires very much. Maybe this is a symptom of guys entering right out of high school, guys just being entitled from an early age to where they no longer get coached because they don't have to be coached, they don't have to listen to the coach, uh, you know, or leaving college early if they got any college uh, people, you know, you hear people like James Harden say, I am a system. I don't imagine he's particularly fun to coach. And certainly LeBron James can't be fun to coach. But he doesn't stop short from once again. And you, you got to count the number of times. The list is long that he finds a way to crap on past teammates because he says he's had teammates like this. Uh, but he follows up crapping on people by bragging on himself and saying that he could do that at eight years old. I, he just, he just don't need to say these things. And it's not anything to be proud of if it's as simple as he's making it sound. But the other thing is watch LeBron James play. Don't tell me that he's versatile. Don't tell me that he's intelligent or a savant. He, he doesn't adjust. He can't adjust. And as far as running plays on the other side, how do you even give anyone an opportunity to run a play on another side when, when you cross half court, you just set up camp down in the corner, the top of the key, but you're done. I mean, you look like you're getting a nice, healthy rest during live offensive possessions and definitely on defensive possessions. 
how, how does anyone know what can be run right or left? It doesn't look like anyone's attempting to do anything. Let's also acknowledge something else. Those of you who are able to acknowledge what you witness when you actually watch a game. LeBron James is not the most talented player on his own team, and it's actually not even close. So let's not talk about being a savant or basketball intelligence when clearly other people are better than you and have a broader range of options to use at their disposal. As unlikable as Austin Reeves has become, that guy can ball, and with his lack of clear advantages, he obviously had to use basketball skill and basketball knowledge in order to overcome those things. Unlike LeBron James, who relied almost entirely on athleticism and consequently has not developed in those other areas. Do not tell me that D'Angelo Russell is not a more skilled player than LeBron James. Don't tell me he's not more skilled. Don't tell me that Anthony Davis is not a better basketball player than LeBron James. Just don't. Stop. Now, putting everything else aside, there are two things you can't deny. You know, whether you disagree with other points I've made, two things are simply facts as they happened. LeBron James, in only two sentences, crapped on other players and then bragged on himself. I'd like to know the level of denial you have to go into in order to say that that isn't true. You know, he, he, he literally made fun of the basketball intelligence or complained about the basketball intelligence of other players in the NBA. And then referenced his own abilities at age eight. In other words, saying that he was beyond them at age eight. You can't tell me that that didn't happen. So then he complained about comparisons. And I, look, the very first episode, you talked about comparisons. <laughs> so don't say that you're tired of the comparisons. You're still making the comparisons. He's talking about Jordan and uh, saying that people shouldn't say that Jordan could have scored blah, blah at blah, blah. But then he talks about, you know, today's players can do this and that and the other thing and have this, that, and the other thing. You're making comparisons. You are perpetuating the conversation. You're not making the conversation go away. You're perpetuating the conversation. And this is coming from the same guy who declared himself as the greatest of all time. That is a comparison. Uh, constantly crowning yourself. It's just, do I, you know, this should be so obvious that a lot of times I don't spend time talking about it because I'm like, oh, why do I even need to say this? But we go back to my opening statement. My God, society has really fallen that you have to explain the obvious. He talks about it's not good for the kids to hear people talk about basketball this way and this, that, and the other thing aren't good for the kids. I, uh, you know how many people, politicians and others, manipulate the kid conversation, pretending like you actually give a crap about the kids? You know, oh, oh, look at him. He's concerned for the future. He's concerned for the youth. Let me tell you what's not good for the kids. Seeing a grown man flop, seeing a grown man just ceaselessly complain, they are being told that it's okay. Because even as you behave that way, excuses are being made for you. Like I said, the NBA has shifted, the announcers have shifted, the analysts have shifted, the media has shifted to accommodate this person's behavior. So now uh, there's no accountability. Now everything is, okay, well, I guess what I'm seeing on TV is fine. I'm being told that it's fine. I'm seeing it repeatedly. I'm seeing it repeatedly. Uh, 
This guy has become a billionaire by behaving in this manner. <laughs> That's not good for the kids. Mr. James. Uh, he talks about, oh, that's for the barber shops. if you want to do that in the shops. Yes, and you have a show called The Shop, which is basically a barber shop in a studio. So you take the things that are in a barber shop and televise them. You put the barber shop, which you think might not be good for kids, into everyone's homes. They no longer have to go to the barbershop to experience this or hear these things. You have invaded their homes. You have invaded their iPhones, their iPads, their tablets. You are in their ears constantly with your own babble, demonstrating exactly what you are trying to say is not good for kids. All you've done is take what isn't good for kids and Spread the reach. I'm going to end this by discussing the intelligence aspect of it. When this guy talks, about 50% of his words are um. And they're not short ums, they're long ums. You don't need to insert that many ums if you are an intelligent, eloquent speaker. <laughs> Ums are buying people time to come up with something to say. Ums mean you haven't been trained in the linguistic arts. You aren't very well educated. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people use the word um, and I do too. I do too, but I'm not declaring myself as a savant. It's a bad habit that we're all guilty of picking up along the way. And it's something that you should work on. If you care about something like that, and if you're going to go onto podcasts or into interviews or anything and have people declare you as a savant or talk about your intelligence, you should try to speak in a manner that makes you sound intelligent. Speaking of sounding intelligent, I know this is offensive in some ways, but using incorrect grammar whether it's cool, whether it's cultural, or whatever the excuse is, is not an example of showing intelligence. You know, if you want to talk about it's bad for the kids, look, they want to make a decision to go and speak in a technically incorrect manner because it's cool or it's socially acceptable. Let that decision be on them in a social situation. But you don't need to come on a podcast sipping wine, trying to look intellectual while demonstrating improper grammar. Pick one. Your tweets are bad for kids. Your public antics are bad for kids. Your press conferences are bad for kids. Your behavior on the court is bad for kids. Your fake social injustice battles are bad for kids. Quitting on the court is bad for kids. Building a museum to yourself, a shrine unto yourself, is bad for kids. Building a school using a foundation's money, which means that donors paid for the school while you take credit for the school, a school which by the what a school which by the way is just another shrine to LeBron James if you look inside of it, is bad for kids. <laughs> 